Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Let me see. How do I go ahead? Hmm. How you guys doing? We're going to be having Kartikeya on to discuss his many different ideas and share that cast. So I was super excited. Hello, hello, hello. I've sent the invite. Welcome, everybody. Going to be doing a Mind Devs episode. Doing it a little different. Normally, it's on Zoom. But decided to go ahead and do an IG Live instead. Uh, I know Kartike is all about sharing his journey and whatnot on Instagram. So I figured we'd go ahead and Let's see. Figure we go ahead and share via Instagram. We're going to be talking a lot about different ideas, different concepts, as well as some ideas and concepts from Life Unknown and just his own ideas as well. So super excited. Let's see. I think he's unable to join. Uh Uh-oh. Let's see. Hey. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. Can you hear me and see me well? Yes. Yes, I can. I'd say maybe a little, like part of your head's cut out. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Is that better? <laughs> yeah, that's better. <laughs> how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Um, how you feeling, by the way? <laughs> Completely good? fine. Yeah. All right, cool. Good. Glad to hear. Yeah. So, so you uh, have to tell me your name first. All right. Ryan. Ryan Perez. Ryan. Nice to Ryan meet you, Perez. Ryan. Yes. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, but I'm originally from uh, New York City. Ah, nice, nice. Do you prefer Vegas or you prefer the city? Personally, I prefer New York City. Yeah. Uh, I, I enjoy the, uh, just the people and, and the different cultures and different areas within New York City. Um, but I like Vegas too. It's not bad. You know? <laughs> Sin City, they call it up. Yes, they do. Yeah, a lot of, <laughs> lot of, uh, I guess, fun stories from working over close to this strip and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here. Super excited to talk with you. Just share uh, your ideas. Share some concepts and ideas from your book as well. And ideas seems you have had as well. I'm excited to sort of dive deep and and just talk about them and share them with people. Thank you I'm for excited. having me. Absolutely. So, I mean, first off, thank you for writing the book. It's, such, it's so good. Like, I, I've been diving into it for the last three weeks, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like, I want to read more and more. I'm just like, ah, it was so good. So, first off, thank you for writing the book, definitely. Um, and so, for those of you who, I guess, don't know you necessarily, could you just give, like, a, a one to two sentence intro of yourself really quick um yeah it's i I write (laughs) books i share my experiences and trying to uh, bring positivity and healing in this world while also acknowledging the darkness and the truth and realities of what we have to go through as human beings and i'm doing whatever i can uh, to bring you guys and everyone together in this world and make sure we work together as human beings to raise our consciousness and try to improve ourselves and be the best version of ourselves. So that's what I'm trying to do my little bit in this world. Yes, absolutely. No, and I love that you keep it, like you keep it real. Like you try to talk about there's goodness in people, but there's also greed and there's also ego and all these other bad things in the world as well that we have to be realistic with and try to sort of like kill in a sense. And, you know, consciousness, I mean, we'll be diving into all of that. And so uh, I know... To my understanding with Life Unknown, you know, it's mostly about you traveling throughout India as well. You sharing your journey. And I'm also curious to eventually talk about your journey now. But um, a question I wanted to ask, just to sort of start off, like when you were going through India, you know, through your journey, what helped you like t- converse and like speak with so many different people that you didn't already know? Mm. Just I traveling key, throughout. I think the key is to come from a place of heart and not mm-hmm. the mind, and not logic, and um, 
really come from a place of a human being. So I think one, and this is a big problem in the world right now, which I think can be um, the way we can mitigate it is by coming from a place of heart and being a human being is, you know, instead of focusing on what separates us or what divides us or what makes us um, look different than each other, like focus on thing that, things that make us look similar, that really bring us together. And when we do that, we will realize that there's more that brings us together than what separates us. You know, we kind of all uh, have very similar beliefs in terms of how we want to live. We want a good family. We want to create good values. We want to do good in this world. That's really how most of human beings work. And there is goodness in all of us. And we function from a place of compassion and love. It comes naturally to us. So, for instance, when you go out of your way to ask somebody for help, you ask somebody for help, they, mm -hmm. they will naturally want to help you. It's, it's innate in us wanting to help people. It's just we have kind of, because of external realities and the way we live and our systems, we've just become a bit separate from that. And, and really what comes naturally to us is compassion and love and wanting to help other people and serve other people. So I think when you come more from a place of heart and you just ask people if you want help or if you want to be, if you're in a vulnerable position, you, you show your cards, you know, your real cards. People naturally want to help you. So I think the key is to come from a place of heart, to not be afraid of talking about your fears and coming from a place of authenticity. I think all these things really help you connect with other human beings on a human level. Uh, and you can let go of all the superficial stuff in the process. So that's my take on it. Hmm. I see. Okay. Oh, thank you. And so, I mean, talking about just uh, being kind and, um, you know, the heart and whatnot. So then I guess I kind of want to take the other perspective of like, um, I had a question. What? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I have it here. Well, pretty much. What role do you think, uh, I believe, greed and ego have played in society today? And how can we try and min minimize or mitigate greed and ego? That's a big question. Uh, everything, you know, if we look at our world today, it's highly, highly driven both by greed and ego. And it's not necessarily, I think the key is to not necessarily look at greed and ego as a bad thing just look at it as a thing that is happening and it's part of human nature as well you know it's the same way mm. as greed has been around for thousands of years it's actually something that comes to us also very naturally we want something more and more and more and more or we see something we want something more and more and more and more i think the key is to develop in our consciousness where we understand greed where we understand ego and we're not driven by it. We don't let it be the driving force of us in the society, any society. So if you think of it in a more holistic way is, you know, whatever we do in the material world comes from this place of I, like whatever I'm doing, I'm writing books, I'm creating an empire, I'm mm -hmm. making more money, I'm doing all this. So that, that, that attachment with this I is really just ego. I, ego being attaching ourselves to I as an identity, as in me, as in Kartike, or me as in Ryan, I'm doing all of this. And there's nothing wrong with the I, there's nothing wrong with striving with the ego and building something in the material world. This is where I think people get it wrong where they say ego is bad. Ego is not necessarily bad. I think it's important to understand that our ego is letting us do many things in the material world, but it's really not in our control at the end of the day. All of it is happening. We're just channels. We're here for some time. We're going to do these things and we're going to leave it behind. It's not going to be ours. So I think the key is to remember whatever we're doing, we're doing great. But let's not, be a, let's not attach ourselves to that I, to whatever we're doing and be like, this is what I did. So I am important or this is what I have. So I am here or I'm the king or I'm you know, yeah. a billionaire. I think mm -hmm. the key is to remember that whatever has happened has happened. This is what I've done. And this is it. Like life goes on and whatever happened is whoever that person was, even if it was me, it was that person in the past. So yeah. it's, it's that detachment from the I, which is the detachment from the ego, which actually helps us lead a more present, mindful and healthier lives. And we don't, we're, we don't 
our our self worth. This I think is an important one, especially for young、mm-hmm. people anywhere in the world. Our self worth shouldn't be defined by what we are outside of ourselves. It should be based on who we are inside. And that's it, because that's really what we're gonna take with us when we die. We're not gonna take anything outside of us with us. So it's important、mm-hmm. to remember that whatever we're doing, we're just doing it to give and share, and that's it. That's what we're doing. And and I think once you change that perspective with ego, you have a better relationship with ego. Greed is is somewhat a bit different because the problem with greed is that、uh, we are. Really, not aware of how greed works in in our every in our day to day. So we're we're、mm. we think that sometimes we think, let's say, somebody's aiming for money. You know, they、mm. don't even know why they're aiming for money. They're just like, well, it's gonna、uh, just money. Answer all my yeah, and answer all my questions and answers and whatever. Yeah. yeah. So the money is money in itself is just a resource or a tool. Yes. It cannot be an end goal. For example.、Mm-hmm. America, this is built around capitalism. Well, you 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 own a lot of capital. You get access to a lot of capital, but if that capital doesn't let you use any of those capital, for example, I tell you, Ryan, you have ten million dollars in your bank account, but you cannot use that ten million ten million dollars for anything. That money is quite useless, isn't it? Because、yeah. you you cannot use it as a form of exchange or as a form of anything. So what really is important is to ask ourselves what do we want in life, and what do we want which money may help us get, and、uh, and beyond superficial things such as a car or, or there's nothing wrong with buying a car but I need I think it's important for individuals to ask themselves what do I really want in life,、yeah. and I think once we start there then we have a better relationship with both greed and ego because we have an understanding of how to. Build our lives, and what do we really want for ourselves? That's best suited for us, not based on what other people tell us, not based on what society thinks. So I hope this is answering your question. I mean, it's on. It's honestly just to sort of get your your thoughts and ideas. Like, like that's、yeah. what this platform is really all about. Just trying to share a lot of these weird, different thoughts and ideas with other people. So now、yeah, that definitely <laughs> answers it. <laughs> They are, they are, they are. You know, as you've 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 read my,、uh, you've read the whole book,、yes. right? Yes. Yeah. So you know, these are topics that I've talked about a lot, and and they really affect us in very subtle ways, and it's difficult、mm-hmm. to kind of talk about them in such short ways because our society is so much driven by greed, ego, fear. Yeah. I mean, these are just really, really driving us in so many subtle subconscious ways that we don't even realize it. Mm-hmm. And the key is the first step is becoming aware of them and how it affects us and the society around us and what it allows us once we become aware of something is it allows us to come from a place where we can then create a life for ourselves based on first being aware of it and not becoming a product of it or not becoming not letting them govern our lives.、Mm-hmm. For example, you don't want you don't want fear to govern your life. You don't want to live in fear because if you're living in fear, if you're driven by fear, you won't ever truly feel inspired in life. You won't ever truly live in in moments because you're driven by fear. So these are things that we need to really learn to first become aware of, and how we can work with them in our lives in our day to day. Real interesting. So because I've heard people talk about using fear as like fuel or like you know to sort of motivate, but so. You, You actually, we better. You think it's better we don't use fear. So, and I, I mean, I'm gonna assume just from reading your book, just more what creativity and open-mindedness and connection with oneself and and the world in like the present. Yeah, it's important to come to the present moment for sure.、Okay. But when I talk about fear, I think it's important to not be driven by fear. So this is where coming back to ourselves is important, and ask ourselves whatever actions we take. Let's say whatever you want to do in life,、uh, whatever path you choose in life, you want to ask yourself: Is it coming from a place of fear? Or is this something I really want? So there is a motive、mm. behind a motivation. There is a there is a motivation behind a motivation. Where is that motivation coming from? You have to ask yourself. And if it's coming from a place of fear. Sure, it's it's acting as a motivation, but it won't take you down a more 
what's the word? It won't take you down an uplifting path because what's happening is the, the root of it is coming from fear. But mm -hmm. if you deal with that fear, you come from a place of truly oneness and inspiration and mm -hmm. an understanding of the world from a great, great, great connection, then that motivation is never going to leave you because you're not coming from a place of fear. You're coming from a place of freedom. And that yeah. is a big difference. That's, that's what makes all the difference. Mm, I see. Okay, cool. And, and I love how you talk about, like, is it like shedding sort of your past self in a sense? That's like a new yeah. idea I've thought of, like, or and read about. Like, it's like, think of yourself sort of like a community of selves, both past, present, and future that will ever exist. I was like, whoa, that's like so meta, but it's kind of true. Like, you hope, you know, like, to continue to do good in the present, to have, to shed your past self, at, at least, at least the bad parts of things and acknowledging that there is still both good and evil in us to hopefully continue more towards like a good future self if that makes sense yeah, yeah. <laughs> well hmm. think about it this way one past doesn't really exist anymore does it it's gone mm -hmm. yeah. it's gone and uh, whatever we did whoever that person was they did some things they learned it and and now this moment is all we have to truly understand what we did in the past and move on from the past and incorporating the changes and, and learn from our mistakes, right? Like, mm -hmm. unless you're, you've made mistakes in your past, you've done some wrongs, you won't be able to grow wisdom wise and incorporate changes in your present moment. And that's yeah. how you change the future. You know, a lot of people get stuck in this cycle of, they look at, they live in the past and they, they don't come back into the present and then their future doesn't change because they're not willing to change themselves in the present moment, depending on what they did in the past. It's yeah. important to change ourselves. We have yeah. to embrace change. We're, we're changing no matter you try it or not. So the more we embrace change and the more we learn from our mistakes, from our wrongdoings, whatever, we have to be our own judge. We have to create that own distinction based on our own understanding. Okay, that's what I did that. Was that right or wrong? Like, was I good to myself or other people? So we have to become our own judge. You know, we don't need, uh, we don't need religion or governments who tell us what we did was right or wrong. We need to ask ourselves, was I right or wrong? And based on that, we make changes in our present. That's why being in the present moment is so important, is you make changes from your past based on, in the present, and then the future is created from that. So coming to the present moment, letting go of the past, but really learning from the past to make changes in your present, and then moving forward, because you don't want to be stuck in the past, so you have to keep moving forward. We have to keep moving. Yeah. Yeah, it's inevitable. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can literally lay down and do nothing, and it's like, well, you're still changing, you know? It's like, it's just the inevitable. The body's like, changing, the biology's back. changing, you know? It's yeah. happening. Uh, <laughs> it's you like it. Yeah, for sure. And I love how you talk a little bit about, like, uh, judgment and whatnot, so I kind of wanted to dive into that. And it's also something I've been thinking about a lot just, again, throughout these last couple of weeks. It's, it's really made me – like, I was literally – take as much I try to take as much time as possible with reading your book to like just reflect after every couple of like every chapter like 10 pages or whatnot and like I was trying to narrow it down and I mean I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on so I think personally at least I've found this could possibly be as a collective for society the biggest fear we face which I personally think is is judgment and there's different types of judgment too judgment of ourselves from strangers judge uh judgment of ourselves of us like cardikea judging cardikea ryan judging ryan mm -hmm. and then worst of all uh judgment from those we hold closest to us mm. and i and personally i think that's probably the toughest judgment and fear we face but i'm mm. curious to hear your thoughts i know i know you talked a lot about when you like went back to see your family and and sort of facing the judgment of oh like I mean, am I a failure in their eyes or something like that? And, like, I could totally relate to that in that sense of, like, having to do school and trying to work in, like, a good job that you think your parents are, like, want you to be in and then coming mm -hmm. back. And it's, like, you know you're going to face that judgment. Even though it comes from a good intention, it's mm -hmm. still that judgment from the ones you hold closest to you. Yeah. Well, one thing is that it's going to happen no matter what we do. Uh, wherever we live, whoever we are, whatever society we live, <laughs> the way humans work is, you know, on a social behavior, yeah. the
the way our society works, the way human interaction works is humans judge each other. That's what happens. Now, the question is for us is how we want to create a relationship for ourselves with judgment. So the first step, and you mentioned it as well, the three pointers, the second one you said was the judgment of ourselves. The first thing that, that is actually in our control and we can work on is the judgment of ourselves. We cannot control other people judging us. They're going to do it no matter what we do, regardless of what they like or not. They're going to do it no matter what we do, right? But the yeah. one thing we can do is focus on um, our judgment for ourselves and our judgment on other people. So that in itself is a big task. Uh, we judge other people so much and we judge ourselves so much all the time. So let's just pick that. I think the number one thing is to focus on when you're judging yourself, like why are you judging yourself? Who are you even judging? For what basis? On what ground? And, you know, like all these things you have to ask yourself, why? Why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. And I, th I think a lot of the times the judgment comes from a place of, not arriving in a place of contentment with who you are, what you want in your life, and are you able to do those things for yourself. So for example, yeah. let's say I, I'm a, I call myself a writer. Yeah? I'm a writer, I'm writing books, and am I able to write books that I really lo love, enjoy writing, or things like that. So I need to ask myself if I'm doing things I really want to do, and am I doing it in a way that really fits with my idea of how I want it to be doing? Right, mm -hmm. so we have to find that alignment, that self-alignment first to get rid of self-judgment. And it needs to come from a place of uh, honesty. I think a lot of the times people are lying to themselves about their own ideas of who they are. You know, like for example, let's say if I, I say, oh, I'm gonna create a self-driving car. Technically mm -hmm. speaking, I'm gonna create a self-driving car. I don't have the technical skills to create a self-driving car. So I may be lying to myself saying I can just build a self-driving car, right? Maybe I can build a self-driving car with the company that I have money and I can invest in that company and I can hire people who can build self-driving cars. Yeah. So we need to know our own strengths and weaknesses to embrace our strengths and understand our weaknesses and really put, our, put best use to our skills and understanding of the world in a way that fits with who we are. That's, that's very important for yeah. us to not judge ourselves because we need to know, we need to be honest with ourselves, what we're capable of, what we're not capable, capable of, what we're good at, what we're not good at. And we need to really be honest with ourselves about these things. And self-judgment for ourselves is, I personally think is the number one thing you need, we need to focus on because that's really something that's in our control. Now, number two is when we judge other people, you, me judging somebody else or Ryan judging somebody else, ask yourself, why are we judging those people? Mm -hmm. we try to, and I think I mentioned this in the book. Yes, yeah, you talk about projections. India, yeah, uh -huh. it's projections. Yeah. When I was walking through India, and this is actually very relevant if you're in serious relationships. You mm -hmm. know, when you're in serious relationships, you, um, you see the good in people, uh, good in the person, or you see the bad in the person very clearly. And if you try to uh, play this game with yourself, and I'll share this with you, is just think of the other person as you. Whatever thought that's coming in your mind for that person in front of you, it's basically a thought <laughs> for yourself. So for example, that person is very selfish. You know, she, she doesn't think about me at all. Maybe a part of me is also doing that same thing for her, you know? Hmm. So we need, to, we need to come to, we need to do the self-reflection exercise where instead of focusing the attention on the other person by judgment, we mm -hmm. bring it back to ourselves saying, how am I, how, how can I break out of this cycle by understanding it's all coming from me? So I think these two <laughs> steps in itself are a big, big fight for judgment. And the more we, the more we separate ourselves from the cycle, we, the more we will separate ourselves from judgment of other people what they think about it because at the end of the day it doesn't matter good or bad you can think i'm a great person or i'm a bad person it doesn't matter you know so the yeah. more we arrive in that state of in simple words no fucks given the more <laughs> happy and joyous we become <laughs> yeah yeah definitely that's definitely something uh 
I found con- conversing with my mom about like she's just like you know I really need to just start embracing like not giving a fuck and just you know because I-, I found like with her she tries to help a lot of other people but then it's like you know like if you're focused on other people you're not really focusing on your own internal battles and struggles so you're still left with sort of those struggles and battles if you will so it's like just gotta yeah. in a sense yeah. not give a fuck like know that you know you want to be good and kind and whatnot and you should you know you should be kind and whatnot but it's like just try not to give a fuck so much and like you, you don't I, how, how you mention it, it's like you can only control what you can control not yes. what you can't control right so yeah. Yeah. Mm. and it's a it's a very simple thing to say but when we start applying this it actually applies to everything everything every yeah. single thing we do really and we really. also realize that you know actually a lot of the times the things we're thinking oh that person is judging me or that person is thinking about this you know in most scenarios people are actually not even thinking about you <laughs> most of them they're just thinking about their own stuff yes. 99.9% uh-huh. of the time so yep. it's really just us creating stories and overthinking about them in our heads and just becoming a a prison of those stories so it's important to just detach ourselves from those stories just watch it as a story let it go Live in the present moment. Yeah. Detach yourselves from what people think. Boom, you'll be golden. Yeah, for sure. Mm. So good. Yeah, I mean, I think the last couple of months, like, so I, I recently read. Well, not recently, I guess now, but the Four Agreements by Dominic yeah. Ruiz. And yeah, I mean, it's it's really like that. Like, just a lot of us just project our own sort of stories in our own head. People aren't even thinking about us. Like, more, like he said, ninety nine percent of the time. So it's like, huh. Like that's so true. <laughs> huh. It is. Wow. It is. We yeah. it's we we just get lost in our own stories, you know, that oh this person's that uh uh-huh. oh, my like, gosh. Oh, nah, nah. <laughs> this whole drama is going on in uh-huh. your head and you're just like oh Yeah, it's like it was never happening uh, in the first place. Like what is going on? Yeah, yeah. it's not <laughs> as bad as we think and uh-huh. you know people are too short of a memory to remember everything anyways, so it's better to be just, honest. Let it go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. And well, there was another thing that came up. We we mentioned you mentioned ego, and I was curious to also hear your thoughts on this one. So this is another idea um, that uh, I converse a lot with my partner, and it's like I I personally think there's a difference between sort of being selfish versus being like egotistical. Do you think? That is true because also hearing your definition of ego, I like how you mentioned like there is no like good or bad ego. It's just like if we can just look at ego from like a thing. It's like I think it's the same idea. But do you think there is perhaps a difference between uh, a person being selfish in the sense of like, well, we need to find food, you know, shelter. We like we're human. We're creatures who, in a sense, need to be selfish to live and and to find what we want to do in life. But then mm. I was kind of thinking like ego is like the evil side of self of like, you know, greed and, and wanting power over others. And what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think um, first, there's no one answer, but I think in, in the way we should live or the ways our society should develop, and in my opinion, this is clearly my opinion, yeah? Mm-hmm. I think we need to find a good balance between the I and the we. where i as in i is also growing and we're also focusing on the we so and you see in any society if you look at any systematic frameworks where let's say america for example mm-hmm. uh, as a country where the i is really thriving you know you as an individual can really thrive in america if you really want to that's that's really what america was built on but as a we america you know if you're If you are somebody disabled in America, they may have a hard time just finding a place to, you know, survive on, and and that's yeah. a negative of a society, right? Mm-hmm. So you want to find the perfect balance of the I and the we, where we are letting individuals who who have that understanding and the strength and the ability to, they have the motivation to grow the I, that they're growing the I, right? But this is where raising human consciousness is important. Uh, the more human consciousness raises what happens is we as individuals realize that there is no i and we there is no us mm-hmm. versus them this is all of us right 
So yeah. whatever I'm doing as an individual, whatever I'm gaining through my books or my understandings or whatever wealth I'm creating, I want to share that with other people in whatever way I can and however way I can, right? So that mm -hmm. helps to build a more one wholesome society. So I'm still striving for my eye, but I have this understanding that I'm not just doing this for myself. I'm doing it to serve other people. I'm doing it to share with other people, whatever I can, whatever is in my capacity, right? Mm. So I think yeah. the, more, the more human consciousness raises, for example, for you, for me, for other people, we realize that oneness, that, you know, we're just products of nature. Yeah. We're just here to create and share and, and, and grow and, and compete with each other. But at the end of the day, come together and be like, this was great, man. For example, I love sports. I love something about sports and I love those sportsmen who, who are, you know, like great sportsmen who, who fight in different teams or let's say um, are, are great sportsmen in different teams and represent different teams, different nationalities. But at the mm. end of the day, they come together at the end of the day, they shake hands, they hug and they're like, game is over. You know, we, we played our best, we mm -hmm. gave our best. And at the end of the day, it was just a game and we yeah. did our best. So I think that understanding yeah. is important. And, and it comes from a place of knowing that at the end of the day, we don't really own anything. We're not going to take anything with us. You know, I hope yeah. Corona teaches this to people. We're not mm -hmm. going to take anything with us, man. Yeah. Nothing. We're not taking, yeah. it's not going with you in your grave. <laughs> you can take it with you in your grave. <laughs> you it's it's going to go back into the soil. Yeah. So whatever you do, you have to give back. You have to share it with others. That's just yeah. how you're going to find your... Uh, find your um, your integration with the world with other people so that mm -hmm. is very important to understand and practice that's how I look at it yeah, a good yeah. balance between the I and the we mm. and how do you how do you I guess I wanted to talk about consciousness a, a little bit but I guess how do you personally define consciousness I've been asked this several times so I'll share with you <laughs> A simple answer that uh, okay. a lot of people have shared what they liked and, and I feel like it's the easiest way to understand it. Mm -hmm. Consciousness is just something that we're all connected to, right? It's in you, it's in me, it's in everything. So it's kind of like a global network, but not a one on wire or Wi-Fi or 5G one. It's just a consciousness based on how our world works. You know, it's in the trees, it's in us, it's, it's in everything. Mm -hmm. And us, us us understanding that consciousness it can be you know it cannot be defined into let's not try and define into a form uh, form way form yeah, that's way. right yeah let's not try and give it a shape let's mm -hmm. just it be a something that is in all of us that makes us one that makes us part of something universal you know and you can many so for example when people become enlightened or they really go into states of nirvana they're like we're with god what really we're with is we're with everything. You know, God is here, God is in you, mm -hmm. God is in everything. It's okay. not like, and it's not God as in some religious God or some figure or form. It's just oneness and divineness yeah. and everything. So consciousness is an understanding. It's not an idea. It's an understanding of oneness. Oneness of everything and everyone that is in this universe. And the more we arrive at that as individuals, the more wholesome our lives become the more integrated our lives become with everything mm -hmm. so whatever we do our actions our intentions they come from a place of uh, oneness they come from a place of creation and that changes everything that's, that's how i look at it okay yeah because I, I know you mentioned uh sorry i, I forget a lot of the names because they're all like new ter uh, like new terms or names and whatnot like the cities and people but you mentioned like, again, the, the guy, I'm just gonna use guy because I'm terrible with, with the recalling the terms, but you mentioned like the guy jumps into the ocean, swims to the rock, stays on the rock for like three days and then he's enlightened. Yeah. So is that what you mean? Like he found like a oneness with, with sort of the world and everything in it? Absolutely. Is that what it means yeah. to me? Okay. So oh, enlightenment nice. in, you know, there's anybody who, and I personally feel that there are many enlightened people in this time, in our age that we're in, and it's mm -hmm. a great thing. Uh, so simple ways to understand enlightenment, and of course it's very difficult to understand it in yeah. words, it's almost impossible. But a simple understanding of it is that you have arrived 
in a place where there's no going back from and you've arrived in an understanding where there's there's just clarity and you just see things as mm. they are and there's no if or yeah or black or white it's just what it is and once we arrive in that understanding then everything connects everything is integrated we see we don't see um we don't see the black and white we see the integration of everything we're kind of in the gray area of everything because we see the the connections that are missing in everything but we're able to see those connections mm. and that's when we understand how everything is connected and we don't try to argue with people we try to understand we we come out of place of understanding we try to understand things rather than taking a stance and this i think is a problem in our world today is yeah uh, people always try to take a position it's it's a lot of duality they're mm-hmm. like either this or that either this or that you know they try yeah. to be a part of something or not mm-hmm. and this is a problem because yes. uh the way we're going to evolve as human beings is by by understanding that we're somehow connected yes. you know yeah. and that won't happen if we've already premeditated to decide that we're going to stick to one circle or a box which thinks this way and the other I way see. is wrong right there's this yeah. this connection yeah. and everything so that's how i look at it and do you think it's natural for humans to want to understand and then we're taught to take a stance one or the other or do you think either one is in a sense taught that's a very good question um i know i, I know it's kind of loaded there cuz it's like and i've thought about it na- for a while i i think i'm a bit more optimistic so okay. i'm going to say i think I think it's natural for human beings. Okay, this is the best way to understand. I think love comes naturally to human beings. I'm mm. absolutely certain about that than hate. So hate is something that we're definitely definitely taught based on our conditionings, based on our environments, based on our historical manipulations and brainwashing. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. So if love comes naturally to us and love is in everyone and everything and if we were to consider love as god, then of course our connections and our understanding and willingness to understand something also comes naturally to us right mm-hmm. because yeah. anything that is divisive anything that is like us versus them like this yeah. and that is mm-hmm. a place of uh, low frequency it's a place of uh, where where people in power use have been using for thousands of years to divide people mm-hmm. and we naturally don't want to be divided this is when human consciousness when when you're ro- when you rise in your human consciousness when you come closer to this understanding of wanting to understand we naturally try to move away from these divisional tactics we we call people's bullshit we know yeah. that this is division so in many ways this is my optimistic thing you know love and all these things they do come natural to us because that is us that is who we are yeah. at the end of the day you know it is a reflection yeah. of who we are mhm now yeah and i try to think of it like when we're all kids you know like 5 10 years old like i don't think a kid ever like for the most part is ever like oh it is this you know like a kid is curious they be like oh why is it this way or why is it the other way why do you think yeah. why do you think this position when that person thinks that position what what is the missing connection there you know like so i, I yeah i mean i i agree i think we are naturally i mean you know loving but also like want to under, seek to understand as children you're, i think we kind of lose that correct. we're naturally we curious yeah we're naturally curious you're right and yeah. kids are, are the best example Increated. because they're naturally curious yeah and we kill that you know as we grow up we kill that curiosity yeah. more than anything yeah and when we kill that curiosity we kill that openness we kill that possibilities we kill the we, we basically too. limit yeah. our ways of thinking into one dimension and i think that's a problem <laughs> imagine that in a sense kids are smarter than adults <laughs> they yeah. are they are yeah huh. yeah wow all right sorry i'm just like getting lost in these ideas just like whoa like ah oh, so good <laughs> <laughs> and there was i wrote down a couple of questions cuz like i said my my memory is pretty bad so i need something to sort of like help me help guide me sometimes but um you had so I mean your idea about religion versus spirituality. 
that's also something I've talked with a lot of different friends too, and I appreciate a lot of my friends are very open-minded about it, but I've also met some who are like, religion is like the root of all evil and we can't talk about religion. And again, you mentioned that as well. Of like, And I, again, totally agree. It's, it's not about religion being evil. Religion is just a, a vessel. We as humans are what make it either good or evil or we can use it in the way we want to. So to either manipulate and control people or to be connected, you and I, and, and have this oneness together. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about your thoughts on religion and spirituality? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, well, if you look at religion or any religion, what has happened over the years is some really spiritual person was there, mm -hmm. uh, any religion, and then they had followers or whatever happened, and then they mm -hmm. created a religion out of that person. And then what they did was to organize people in the name of their religion. And that in the name of a certain philosophy and name of certain ideology. And whatever you try to teach people out of a book, what's right or what's wrong, based and make them follow a certain doctrine, you're doctrinating them, you're brainwashing them. Mm -hmm. And that is the core problem with modern day religions. What they've become is they've become a doctrinating process. And spirituality isn't about doctrination, it's about curiosity, it's about questioning, it's about understanding. And these things don't necessarily come with you if you follow a certain text or, or an idea. It comes to you naturally. So mm -hmm. we are naturally spiritual beings, you know? It's like we have a mind, we have a body, we have a heart, we also have a spirit. This is something that we naturally are born as. All beings, not just human beings. The problem is we're just disconnected with, with our spirit. We're disconnected with that with that essence of our humanity, of our beingness, that we need external systems to make sense of us. And I personally believe that religion, maybe when it was started, it was set up for good intentions, but in the modern times, religion is, is not, uh, it's, it's become a more destructive thing because it's organizing people based on an idea, based on a thought process, based on an ideology and identity, and it's clubbing them and making them act as a group, as a herd, and really brainwashing them, right? And mm -hmm. that is a problem. I think if any religion, for example, whatever X religion was telling people to ask questions, to be curious, not be part of some form or group, and really go out there and experience things in life, that would be great, but that's not happening, right? So the, the, the core thing is mm -hmm. you don't need to go anywhere and I adhere to a philosophy or an idea or a person or anything to be spiritual. You can be spiritual right here. This mm -hmm. is your judge. This is your religion. This is your God. It's all in, in us, you know, and we don't need to name it. We don't need to put an identity to it. We don't need to put anything to it. It's rather formless. So I think the more we understand this as individuals, the more we naturally will become distant from religion. It will happen naturally because religion mm -hmm. in modern world is become this organized thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And that mm -hmm. is the problem. Anything that yeah. becomes into this organized drama of uh, whatever, <laughs> and it takes away from the real aspects of the real yeah. values, right? For example, in any religion, be it Christianity or even Hinduism, um, you know, we have gods, we have these symbols, we have these ideas, and we have these stories, right? Stories are what really shape any religion. So mm -hmm. when you look, listen to the stories of Christ, it's like he was so compassionate. Even when his enemies were attacking him, he was all just love, right? Okay. That's really the stories. But are we acting that way? No. Are yeah. we acting according to the gods of Hindus, where the god left the kingdoms and gave away the wealth? I mean, we're not acting for the values of what the stories are mm -hmm. meant to teach us. So it's really, it's, it's really, we need to ask ourselves, what is it for us? Why, why do we, why do, what do we want in life? Like what life means for us? All these things, seeking, mm -hmm. not blindly believing is what we need in the world. We don't need yes. blind faith. We need mm -hmm. people to ask questions. And I think religions, um, don't encourage that and that's the problem mm. it doesn't encourage they don't encourage seeking they don't encourage asking questions why can't people question if i tell you something ryan i want you mm. to question it. 
that's a great part about a dialogue yeah. of understanding. Mm-hmm. I want you to arrive at your own understanding based on what you realize. That's really mm-hmm. how it should work. That's ideal. Because that way, nobody's telling you what's right for you. You're figuring it out for yourself. And the more we do that as individuals, we arrive at a more evolved place. And that's yeah. what we need. Yeah, yeah like you mentioned, uh, a seeker's mind and trying to always seek and understand. Yeah. yeah. And now I was a little confused. You mentioned like there's like no purpose and no meaning to life. Um, <laughs> uh, now, and I was trying to really like reflect on that as well, like the last like couple of days at least. And it's like maybe, and I would like obviously your thoughts on this, but it's like my, my, my thinking of it was maybe what you were trying to say is that life is not something we like necessarily should strive for, but simply something we must go through. Well, um, this is a tricky one, yeah, because mm-hmm. you've read my book, so you've, you've read about where I'm coming from when I say that. Yeah. And when I say it, just, you know, no meaning or no purpose in life in a normal setting, people sometimes misread okay. it because they're like, oh, what do I do in life, you know? Yeah, like, oh my gosh. But yeah. then you're just always talking about we should strive for something, we should want something, you know, like mm-hmm. we should have a purpose in life. Yeah. So there is this concept that I've tried to explain this to people in a normal sense is think of life in absolute ways and relative ways. In an absolute sense where we're not part of the material world, where there's no form to us. And this is a wild idea, but just listen to me. Yeah? Uh, there's, a, <laughs> there's, a, there's no form to anything. And in the absolute sense of it all, absolute mm-hmm. sense where no concepts exist, nothing at the, happens nothing is we're gonna we're gonna die everything's just gonna go on and boom and that's in that absolute sense there is no meaning or no purpose to life because there's nothing there's nothingness to everything and that's the beauty of life but it's not a very practical thing to say for example i meet somebody in a natural day they're like struggling to go through life and i need to tell them to strive for something because it's tough for humans to first arrive in the absolute state because most people live in a relative state which is relative in terms of their physical reality their families so Mm -hmm. for them to live in that relative state they need to strive for something if they don't then they feel very lost they feel very lost Mm -hmm. in terms of what they want to do they need a routine they need a structure they need to strive for something and that will help them lead a better life so Mm -hmm. the answer is yes and no yeah, there is okay. an absolute sense. There is no meaning. There's no purpose in life. But not everyone can get there. So we need to yeah. be more practical. And I see. yeah, there is. Okay. There's important. It's important to also have purpose and meaning in life. I hope this yeah. answers. It's tough to answer this one. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, mm. yeah, I know. Think Thank about you. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm definitely gonna reflect on it more and like listen back. And like, oh, okay, hmm, and and ponder that idea a lot more. And well, I also wanted to, to mention, because I, I know this is an idea you really tried to hone in your book, and I wanted to make it clear for our listeners as well. So you have an idea where the idea pretty much goes, um, escalate the evolution of humanity by dissolving human-made identity boxes that we put on ourselves. That's a big one for me. Yeah, so I would love for you to just use this platform. Please just share that idea with us. I would love to hear more about this. Well, the idea is, in simple terms, is to break everything. Break, mm. break everything. Break everything about who you are. Everything, starting from your color, your race, your uh, religion, your nationality, your identity. All these things that are yeah. given to us since the day we are born by outside. You didn't choose these things. They were given to you. Even your name, even all of those things. Just go clean slate and start from nothing. Mm -hmm. And really, to get to that nothing, it's it's a long process because you really have to get rid of a lot of shit. Once you start going through it, you'll be like, wow, all of my life is really built around what I've been told and how I've been functioning (laughs) and blah, 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 blah. Uh So once you start going through that, you just, you start realizing that there's so much shit that we carry in, in ourselves and our ideas are not really ours. They're somebody else's, our 
Our identity is not really ours. There's just yeah. somebody else's that's been put on us. So the idea is to break everything about ourselves and arrive at a place of nothingness. From then, we can start, start a new life by building things that we want in a conscious way. The first step is to break everything and constantly keep breaking them because the more we break things, it's not about, it's not about putting more things on us. It's about breaking them. The more we break them, the more we shed our layers, the more we arrive at an understanding of who we are. You know, like if you think of a, let's say if you're emptying a trash can, right? To get mm -hmm. to the bottom of the trash, you have to remove all the trash. Yeah. So let's say whoever we are, it's somewhere here. All of the, this year is just filled with trash. So what we're doing is we're getting the trash out huh. until we arrive at a place where we're like, all right, this is, yeah. this is a real depth. This is what I haven't mm. connected with all my life. Yeah. This is what's really supposed to tell me what I want in life. So that, that is where we have to arrive. The, the magic spot. That's a great picture to think of, of it, like a trash, huh? That's, so how would you recommend one could even start to break something? Or maybe you could give us an example of maybe how you broke something well, simple yeah. even? So... Simple answer is it's a long, long, long process. Yes. <laughs> uh, where you have to do a lot of meditations, mindfulness exercises, or many things that whatever helps you connect more with yourself. Um, you can start writing, you can start journaling. Uh, okay. but, but first thing is, it's, it's not something you can force down to anybody, right? Somebody mm -hmm. has to, it is an intrinsic thing. So if I tell you, Ryan, just let go of your name, you know, you're like, why? I love my name. It's something that an individual needs to first be intrinsically motivated about that they want. So Voluntarily. if somebody is motivated, but then mm. the first step I would say is start asking why's, why's of like, why this, why that. that. Yeah. And then, you know, once you start with those why's, it takes you in the direction of, okay, maybe I will try meditations or I'll try these techniques or something that helps me connect with these breakings or writing or art, mm. whatever. It can yeah. be the, the, the way it can be anything, you know, there's no one way or the other. There can be many ways, but the key is to first start asking like the way you're asking. And then you go into this, this, this massive endless black hole where you just keep having things come at you and you're like, Oh, then you don't ask this question, how I do it. Then you're like, oh my God, how far does it go? <laughs> yeah, and just keep spiraling, why, why, how, why? Yeah, huh. and then yeah. it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deep ocean and you realize there's so much to do and so much to unlearn. It's unlearning processes, what we need to really do. Mm -hmm. And I, I know a lot of these questions are just like, hmm, how do you explain that in like five, 10 minutes? Like, like even in the book after reading for hours, it's like, like still trying to better understand. It's like, ah, it's, it's definitely tough to <laughs> share and, and, and talk about, but, but thank you for trying to keep it simple and just like relaying the message in a simplistic way. <laughs> There's so many different ideas, right? Like, oh, hold on, my thing just popped up. <laughs> but yeah, so many different ideas. It's like, how does one, well, how have you found has been helpful for you to, to, in a sense, communicate your ideas to people? I think once you arrive at a clarity in yourself, mm. for yourself and who you are and what you, what makes sense to you for yourself, right? So mm -hmm. what I'm sharing is what makes sense to me. And it's, it's yeah. how I look at things. And I'm not forcing it down to anybody's throat. It's just like, this is how I look at it. This is what I experienced. This is what came to me. And this is what I'm sharing with you. And if this makes sense to you, then try it out. You know, maybe it will work, maybe not. It's up mm -hmm. to you. It's not, yeah. I'm not doing anything. I'm just sharing. And I think that yeah. is what we do as artists. Our job is simply yeah. to share what we believe is wor has worked for us and what has helped us understand more and I think the more we, we come from a place of experience, like actually experiencing in life and then creating something out of that, then there's more authenticity to it. There's more depth to it. Yeah. You're not just, you know, 
coming from it from a place of like um, nowhere. It's coming from a place of an understanding from a deep place out of yeah. your own experiences. So I think that's really where people should strive for, try and experience things in life, you know, try yeah, and definitely. do different things. And, and the more we experience, the more we understand. Um, so yeah, I think that's yeah. definitely something we, we miss a lot too. And again, you mentioned that too, of like maybe just grabbing depth in something. Like how yeah. you, like, you talk about a lot of tourists would go and travel there to study for like a couple of months when you know, I mean, you talked about, again, sorry, the guy who, who went and like into isolation for 12 years, many times in a row in his life. Like, like what? You know, it's like, but experiencing some sort of depth in that. Yeah, I, th I think Well, I important. think this is a big challenge for this age, actually, the, the especially young people and I. I'm including myself, is we're looking for shortcuts in life. We are. Mm. We're looking for shortcuts. We're looking for short things. And, you know, social media tells us, like, you become this in one day or become this in overnight. It doesn't happen like that. It takes yeah. time. To become master at something, it takes years. Decades, and I'm talking yeah. decades, you know. Yeah. And I think at some point we kind of just forgot that because mm -hmm. we, again, because we've become products to this idea that, Oh, we do this, we'll get this. No, mm -hmm. if you really want something, have a deep understanding for it. You have to dedicate your life to this. Thing. And that is, is missing in this world deeply, deeply. Like yeah. rare. It's becoming rare. It's, it's becoming so rare that if you're doing something like that, people are like, wow. Yeah. How's, how does that feel like? You're doing something for a Whoa. decade. Wow. You know? <laughs> yeah. A real mastery happens like that it, yeah. it happens for if you if you dedicate just endless amounts of hours and any great artist any great master of any form of art that has happened in human history till now didn't happen overnight they yeah. they spend their lives to it and i think this is what people are missing at the moment yeah. they need to really arrive at that and yeah. i think our instagram is going to end soon because we're coming at an hour Okay. Uh all right. Then yes, I, I again agree as well. Uh it's acknowledging one has to sacrifice something for to focus down for a couple of decades and become a master. So then I guess a uh, quick little run a uh, quick you know, quick Q and A real quick. Uh well what are you currently learning now? I am currently learning to rest and chill a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um what what have you done that uh, I should do? I don't know. I think um, I never try to tell people to be like me. I, I always encourage them to uh, be more like what they want and what they really is uh, inside them in terms of who they are. So I think what I would recommend is, um, and I recommend this to parents a lot for their children mm -hmm. is, Try and encourage your people to do more in self-reflective work, okay. uh, you know, either meditation and all these things because mm -hmm. they work, man, and okay. they, they really help you come to an understanding of who you are. So that's what okay. I recommend. Got it. Will do. Uh, what are some daily habits uh, you like to focus on personally? Uh, staying physically active. That's, mm -hmm. that's a big one. It's just part of my life now. Yeah, uh, so you're getting into boxing? Yeah, I, I did that a lot last year, and now I've been, I'm training myself a lot. I'm going on some high altitude tracks soon. Mm. So I've been training myself cardio-wise a bit for that. And uh, I would recommend meditation. That's what okay. I do daily habits, meditation, yoga, and okay. physical exercises. All right. And then uh, where can people find you? Instagram. Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, for sure. Instagram, and I know you have a website, Kartikeyalada. I do have a website as well, but mostly Instagram, Instagram. at Kartikeyalada is where you can find okay. me. Okay, cool. And then uh, how can I go ahead and add value to you? How can I, to me? Yes. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, that's fine, uh, absolutely. Then, you know, feel free Reach out to me, whatever you need. I'm here to also help and serve you as well. Uh, just as a thank you, you know, appreciate you writing the book, taking the time to just talk and 
and share these ideas. I think more people reading the book would be helpful okay. because not just for me. I just think that you know I wrote these books, even the first one, out of my own like experience of what I was going through, and they mm -hmm. were very helpful for me. And it really helped me change my entire life, my own thinking, everything. So I think okay. there's value in them, which mm -hmm. I think translates into people's lives. Mm -hmm. I think that would be valuable for people. Right. Yeah, I'll definitely continue to spread your message, of course. Uh, thank you so much for, for your time and for being here. Thanks, Ryan. So great connecting with you. I hope Absolutely. we meet one day. For sure, yeah. I would love to but come. But not in Vegas. So I don't want to come to Vegas. It's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will do. Well, you take care, all right? Take care. Take care. Take, take care.